This is iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's a fantastic 12 megapixel camera that can also make phone calls. iPhone 11 Pro Max comes in this nicely designed box. Inside the box, we're greeted with some papers, some stickers, debuting, USB C to lightning cable, 18 watt USB C power adapter, ear pods, and of course, iPhone 11 Pro Max itself iPhone has the new 7 nanometer A13 Bionic chip with the third generation neural engine that consumes less power. The new Super Retina XDR screen has 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and it is brighter. At the back it has three 12 megapixel cameras, wide, telephoto and ultra wide. It can shoot 4K 60 frames per second video with extended dynamic range using all of its lenses. To put that in perspective, if you like to shoot 4K 60 frames per second video with Samsung's latest 8 core CPU 12GB RAM Star Destroyer Note 10 Plus, you can only use wide angle camera and it can't handle electronic image stabilization. At the front, we have the new True Depth camera system that works faster and easier. Front facing camera is 12 megapixels, and that one can shoot 4K 60 frames per second video as well. iPhone 11 Pro Max is resistant to 4 meter water for 30 minutes. Compared to iPhone XS Max, it is taller, wider, thicker, and heavier. The matte finish looks just stunning, and Apple says the glass on the front and back are stronger. And it is made from stainless steel. Apple says the Face ID on iPhone 11 family works faster and works with better angles. So I was hoping that would mean working in landscape mode, but no. Thanks to the A12 processor with iOS 13, the Face ID works faster on iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR as well. Apple says it is 30% faster, but according to my tests, it is 22% faster. But the Face ID on iPhone 11 unlocks better while it's flat on the table. The difference is noticeable, but not huge iPhone 11 also has the Dolby Atmos feature. What that means is while you're watching stuff, if what you're watching supports Dolby Atmos, it's gonna sound like a surround system. I've been thinking about how I can show this to you and I came up with an idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Sennheiser MBO headset. And if you don't know what that is, I reviewed it in a separate video. These headphones have microphones on them right here and they let you record what sound reaches your ear. So you record a binaural sound which is actually a lot of fun. For this part, please wear your headphones because that's how you will hear the difference. Here we go. Now, let's take a look at the speed tests. When it comes to Geekbench tests, unsurprisingly, iPhone 11 family is ahead. But when we switch the phones into low power mode, in multi-core, iPhone 11 scores almost as low as iPhone 10. This may mean the low power mode saves much more battery. I'll be testing this out soon. But now, just look at the difference between Note 10 Plus and iPhone 11. When it comes to Antutu, once again, iPhones are scoring 11 out of 10, if you know what I mean. Graphic bench test results are similar as well. 
When we switch to game launch times once again, iPhone 11 is ahead. But now, let's take these tests up a notch. Let's export a 4GB MP4 to 1080p in Adobe Rush and see what happens when we ask these devices to do some real work iPhone 11 Pro Max exports the file in 5 minutes and 20 seconds. This is more than twice as fast as Note 10 Plus, which finishes the task in 11 minutes and 38 seconds. However, after all these tests, iPhone 11 family were the warmest compared to the rest. Another feature iPhone 11 family has is the audio zoom. They didn't talk about it in the keynote, but it must be very similar to what Note 10 Plus does with its zoom mic feature, right? Let's take a look. Let's switch back to yeah, Note 10 Plus again. And back to iPhone 11 again. When it comes to cameras, apart from the new cameras, we also have this feature underneath composition. It says photos capture outside the frame, videos capture outside the frame, and auto apply adjustment. So what that does is actually very interesting. Let's take a look at this photo. As you can see, we have this icon on the top right. So now what I can do is I can hit edit and go into the settings and I can hit crop and I can zoom out. So this is a great feature and it keeps this second photo on the phone for 30 days and if you're not doing anything with that photo, it assumes you don't need it. It just deletes that photo and it moves on. When it comes to the night mode, I did a blind test and asked you. After 9,000 of you voted, the results are like this. The last place goes to Note 10 Plus. The third place goes to iPhone XS Max, which doesn't even have a night mode. The second place goes to Pixel 3. And the first place goes to iPhone 11 Pro Max. Photos taken with the wide-angle camera looks great and I think at this point what looks better depends on your taste. Having said that, I feel like iPhone 11 deals with the auto-white balance a little better than iPhone XS Max. These are all great photos and all of these phones are winners. When it comes to the telelens, things get a little tricky. Smartphones don't really switch to the telelens unless the light requires them to. The phone just zooms in using the wide lens. You can test this by blocking the lenses with your fingers. Anyway, personally, in this photo, I love the colors of Samsung, but the detail on iPhone 11 Pro Max seems fantastic. Which means after two clicks of editing, iPhone 11 Pro's photo look much better in every way. The ultra wide angle lens has fixed focus and it doesn't have optical image stabilization, but as you can see, it's not a big deal. The thing about this lens is that it doesn't suffer from the barrel distortion like S10 Plus or Note 10 Plus's ultra wide angle camera does. Samsung is aware of this and they choose to fix it via software instead of using better quality lenses. iPhone 11 Pro Max starts leaving the competition behind when it comes to how these three lenses are used. While shooting something in the distance, you can't even realize when it is switching between lenses and the zoom in and out can be performed smoothly, which is insanely impressive. When we try the same thing with Note 10 Plus, the footage simply looks bad. Also, I don't know if you noticed it, but Note 10 Plus suffers from something else as well. For this, I'm going to slow down the footage to 25% so you can see how Note 10 Plus freezes while switching between lenses. Just like its little brother, S10 Plus. Wait for it, here comes another one. Well, it looks like Note 10 Plus needs at least another dozen RAM to pull this off. Now let's put the phones that support 4K 60 frames per second side by side and perform a shake test. Shaking. The reason Note 10 Plus is failing this test so badly is because it doesn't support stabilization at 60 frames per second. Now let's walk.
When we switch to telephoto lens, you can see that the stabilization of iPhone 11 is off the charts. Note 10 Plus is not in this comparison because as I mentioned before, you cannot use the other lenses in 60 frames per second. Despite not having the optic stabilization, the ultra wide lens floats like an angel in 4K 60 frames per second. In 4K 30 frames per second, where all these cameras can perform with optic and electronic image stabilization, things look much better for Samsung. However, iPhone crops 9 not cropped 16% of your footage to apply this electronic image stabilization. What that means is when you shoot a video in 4K using electronic image stabilization, you're actually getting an upscale 3.64K footage from iPhone, 3.3K footage from Note 10, and 3.2K footage from Pixel 3 XL. So if we turn on the diamond inspector mode and zoom in 350% you can see how blurry the footage from Note and Pixel is. Nice party trick you guys. And if you decide to turn off the electronic image stabilization to get your resolution back, this time Note 10's telephoto and front facing camera greets you with a wonderful surprise of rolling shutter problem. Now let's test the front facing camera and the sound quality. Now let's test the front facing camera and the sound quality. Now let's test the front facing camera and the sound quality. Now let's test the front facing camera and the sound quality. I can immediately see that we're more cropped in on iPhone 10s Max and iPhone 11 and 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max is more it's wider. It seems like iPhone 11's noise cancelling works really good. Note 10 Plus still records too much noise and Pixel 3's microphone is still mediocre. I have to say, I'm loving the 12 megapixel front facing camera of iPhone 11 Pro Max. Shooting 1080p 120 frames per second slow motion video with the front facing camera is a lot of fun. I can't believe people fell for the slothy buzzword and spread it all around in 10 minutes. Judging slothy as if selfie was such a classy word. Okay, that's fine. That's that's good. Talking about slow mo, you can use any lens on the rear camera to shoot in any mode you need. Time lapse, slow motion, video, photo, panorama, all three cameras are at your service. Actually, you can even shoot wider portrait mode as well. You lose the extended dynamic range when you shoot 4K 60 frames per second with front facing camera because the phone can't shoot every other frame with different exposure to create wider dynamic range but still you get this nice 4K slow-mo footage especially when you play it back in 30 frames per second. By the way between you and me this means the rear cameras actually can shoot 4K 120 frames per second video. That is a very very big deal. That kind of power allows you to shoot with two cameras at once. Also, the smart HDR on iPhone 11 is renewed. What it does is it knows your face, it knows the sky, it knows the hair, and it applies effects accordingly. I find that a little bit too much for me. I like to edit those photos myself. It looks like it's already edited when you take a photo with smart HDR. Also, when you go into the camera, you can change the lens, of course, from these, but you can swipe up. And now we have some settings, but no, we cannot change the video resolution yet, but we have some settings. So that's a start. You can turn the live photo on. You can turn HDR on and off. You can swipe it away and it goes away. Apple also talked about a feature called Deep Fusion, and that's going to be available in the fall. What it does is when there's enough light, it takes eight photos even before you hit the shutter. And then when you hit the shutter, it takes a long ex exposure photo and combines all that information together and creates one super photo for you. As soon as that gets released, I'll be testing it. Apart from all the crumbling, Note 10 Plus has actually some really nice new features. And one of them is this video live focus, which cuts out the person and creates this depth effect. It actually works very, very, very good. And I believe Apple can do this with a simple update as well. Because by capturing the screen, I can already see a very similar result on my phone. 
I've been watching people who start their keynote talking about the importance of meaningful innovations and then introduce a device that is filled with gimmicky and dysfunctional features, like this unbelievably bad 3D scanning feature, something iPhone has been doing since 2017, and in an incomparable way, yet no one talks about it. In the end, iPhone 11 family are the best iPhones out there right now. And I'm really glad Apple is once again with the people who knows what's cooking on that three burner oven. People who loves creating. People who loves function over form. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it. And join the world domination. And please let me know what you think about iPhone 11 Pro. iPhone 11 Pro Max or iPhone 11. Please let me know in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves. And always check out it.